Hi everybody, Rob Keys here doing a quick review of Marvel's Captain America Civil War. This is um, very quick, no spoilers. Uh, the movie opened in the UK uh, this weekend, but it doesn't open in North America until Friday. I managed to see the very early screening in Toronto on Thursday morning, which was a nightmare to get down to. But I'm very glad I did because I'm writing so many freaking features. So before I get into my review, uh, if you're a Marvel movie fan and you want to know more about this movie and what comes next, we have a dozen features, all exclusive content coming to ScreenRant.com uh, Friday morning. But for my own thoughts, um, I'm sure you've seen the reviews. The early buzz was accurate. Uh, this movie is pretty damn good. It's super fun. Um, if you like having fun watching Marvel's movies and you like those characters and what they built, this is like Marvel having the most fun they've had with those characters and putting more of those toys into this toy box than you've ever seen before. Um, and uh, in a big way, the, this movie really, really relies upon you having seen the previous movies more than any other Marvel movie to date. Uh, it's building upon the events and, and the characters and the relationships uh, that you've seen through phase one and two, which is a dozen films, believe it or not, since 2008 up until uh, Civil War. I believe Civil War is the 13th film in, in the set. So um, that's crazy. And it fully takes advantage of that. It expects you know these guys. Um, you don't waste time reintroducing characters you've already met uh, because there are new characters um, that you meet in this one that I'll get to in a second. Um, but... More than that, more than it, it just being fun uh, and, and doing this big thing with all these characters, this this movie, like, I don't, I don't want to say it's a warning, but, but before going in, you have to know that like, this is a setup film. Uh, it's not talked about much in the reviews, but this film is so clearly uh, laying the groundwork for Phase 3 that it doesn't feel like a complete story. It's just saying, look, here are all the characters you've met, all the earthly characters you've met. Of course, there is no Thor or Hulk. They're getting their own film in Thor Ragnarok next fall. Uh, but all the other characters, they're all back. Here's the world as we know it. Here's the political landscape as we know it. Here are the organizations that are still in play. No shield, though, because they are you know they fell apart in uh, The Winter Soldier, the last movie from, from these directors, uh, the Rousseau brothers. Um, and it's saying, look, th this is what you have now plus a few extra bits, and this is what you're going to see going forward throughout Phase 3. Um, and I think what's what's really awesome about this film is how it overcomes some of the very obvious challenges of a film of this scale and scope. And and like there are literally a dozen Avengers. You can see the trailer. There are Team Cap versus Team Iron Man, and like that's six Avengers each, uh, some of them brand new. So that's 12, literally 12 Avengers plus supporting characters, uh, returning faces, and a couple of the new ones that we'll see coming back in later movies. And it does an amazing job of handling them all because every single character, not just the Avengers, not just the newcomers, but all the supporting characters too, everyone gets a memorable moment or three. In fact, every character gets more than one memorable moment. Uh, and that's like super hard to do. It's hard to service that many characters and, and, and you know make them effective for audiences. But I think, again, a lot of that has to do with making sure the new characters make a big splash in a big way and have a very important role to play in this film and so you know they're going to come back later i'm talking about black panther and spider-man which i'll again i'll get to in a second uh but also all the returning characters because again like i said um this movie puts the onus on you to kind of be prepared coming in like this is not an introduction this is phase three now you've had your time to learn of who these guys are through phases one and two you could have got by skipping a lot of the phase one films as a, as a casual movie goer going into the Avengers. But now like, you know, these guys, you know who Tony Stark is. He's been doing this shit for eight years. Um, and this is what you get to play with. Um, so yeah, one big challenge, obviously is dealing with that many characters and making it work, uh, and giving them all time to shine. The Rousseau's do that. The writers, uh, McFeely and, and Marcus do it again. Like incredible work. That's, uh, probably the biggest accomplishment. One of the biggest accomplishments this film does. Uh, the other ones are, of course, introducing Black Panther and sort of teasing um, what the what Wakanda and their culture and their hierarchy, how that all functions. And, of course, the Black Panther suit. And, like, even Chadwick Boseman plays T'Challa, who's the Black Panther uh, prince of Wakanda in this film. And he has, this, like, they made, like, a custom sort of African accent, which they spoke to us very briefly on set last summer uh but it comes off awesome and when he's wearing the suit and talks to the other characters it's so cool and his fighting style in and out of the suit is incredible um i'm very curious how they're going to explain his his um not so much his martial arts but it's very clear from how he fights that he is also some sort of super soldier like he can fall from super high he can go right up against the winter soldier and cap and it's like no problem um without you know He's, I don't think he's a normal human. He definitely has some sort of superpowers, and um, I'm sure that'll be explored in the in the Black, Black Panther solo movie in, uh, I think it comes February 2018. Um, and of course, uh, the other major introduction is that of Peter Parker, 
aka Spider-Man. And yes, I'm happy to say that I my expectations weren't that high for this. I thought from that very brief teaser trailer reveal when he says, hey everyone, um, that it was not going to work for me. But that dialogue was, did not actually belong with that visual in the actual movie. They kind of cut that together weirdly. Um, but I'm happy to say Tom Holland as Peter Parker, in incredible easily and i hate to say this because i love andrew garfield but it makes you forget about that it's like forget sorry toby mcguire sorry andrew garfield uh tom holland is the guy he's young he's super talented he's got the look and even though he's a british actor like garfield he does like the american you know queen's accent like i didn't even i couldn't even recognize that he was actually a, a you know a british actor um but his introduction as peter parker and i'm so happy they introduced him as peter parker first like you get to see the, the parker and aunt may as real people before you see him suit up. And that was such a smart decision because you have to sell me on that character before you do the swinging and web slinging. Because we've seen the CGI web slinger in action before, but the introduction to Peter Parker and, and with Tony Stark was, was incredible. Such a good scene. Tom Holland has such great chemistry with Robert Downey Jr. We had heard this from their early reactions and, and a lot of the reports when they were casting this actor. They had looked at hundreds of actors, but they actually screen tested uh, him with some of the other stars, including Robert Downey and, and Holland just clicked and that totally shows on screen i'm very happy that robert denny jr will be a supporting character in spider-man homecoming because tom holland and robert denny jr need to be on screen as much as possible so power to marvel putting them together next next summer uh and then the spidey solo film uh parker's amazing spider-man's awesome his action is fun he's hilarious they got the wit down he's always talking and they make fun of him always talking um and he's got very cool little scenes with the kind of all the key players so uh smart introduction for Black Panther and Spider-Man. So that's what this film does does the best. So if you're worried about there being, oh, there's too many characters, or who's going to do, how are they going to do Spider-Man again? Don't worry about it. They nailed that stuff. Um, this film, however, a lot of the early reviews had it, at the first like 15 or 20 reviews, like had it at like 100% of Rotten Tomatoes. And then it kind of fell down to like whatever, low 90s, which is pretty amazing still. Uh, but there are some people coming out of that world premiere like three weeks ago saying this is like a masterpiece this is the best marvel movie ever flawless and it's like mm, it's not temper your expectations a bit um because i had some problems with this film um it's i think it's a great film but i don't think it's marvel's best i still think as a solid picture from beginning to end um you know iron man and and even captain america the winter soldier are better and i think captain america the winter soldier is also better on the action front um that being said, Captain America Civil War has a shit ton of action. Obviously, there are so many characters. And the second act battle, you've seen teasing the trailers, the thing I got to see on set being filmed, with all the characters just clash. Um, you can tell it's only one actual team of actors fighting CGI characters. I mean, Team Iron Man is Team CGI, unfortunately. And that really, really comes through because there are scenes where it's very obvious that it's green screen and other scenes where it's very obvious that the players on screen are not actually there. It's just CG. And that really comes through with a lot of the Black Panther and Spider-Man stuff, which is very unfortunate because uh, some of the close-up stuff was really great. But um, like Black Panther chasing, you see him in the trailer, chasing um, um, Bucky uh, with, with Cap in pursuit. Doesn't, most of that looks really, really fake. And it's like, oh, it's hard to be sold on that sort of that chase sequence and, and the intensity of it when I know it just looks fake. Like like Blade Two vampire fake, um, like rubber men in some scenes. And that's unfortunate. Uh, there are other scenes where, um, I don't want to spoil anything yet, but uh, there are other action scenes which are amazing. Like you get to see characters that are returning and, and some new characters do like uh, things with powers you've never seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe before. And the way those are shot, uh, like some of the, like, well, I don't want to name characters, but very cool action as well. But um, a lot of the other action looks looks fake. And I think a lot of the close-up stuff wasn't as, as impactful um, as you see in the, like, their Netflix shows like Daredevil um, specifically and of course again like I think the Winter Soldier still has the best action of any Marvel movie um, there's nothing in this well I don't want to say that either again I'm avoiding spoilers but uh, the other part of the action which didn't work for me is like there's a very inconsistent use of s like slow motion there's like two times it like slows down and it's kind of a weird use of it because there are other times like with Falcon especially when he's doing like a crazy kick out of the air and like doing a flip thing and like that should be slowed down. They should have like totally Zack Snydered that and that would have looked amazing uh, because otherwise it just looks like CGI and wire work and it doesn't look real. But if they slowed that down, they could have done some really cool stuff in other moments. But it feels like most of the time it's just kind of speed frame and then randomly twice or three times in the movie they just do slow motion and it's like I don't understand why they chose little scenes and not the others. It just felt like 
I don't know, there was no consistency to it, and I couldn't get, there wasn't the proper formula to it, and I get it because there's so many different characters, but it doesn't even follow the rules of its own characters in, in any way, but anyways, the set pieces overall, the big action bits are like just, just so much happening on screen, um, but because it's actual characters you know fighting, it has a far greater impact on me as a viewer, and I think all of you fans will agree when you see it, unlike the Age of Ultron climax, where it's like a bunch of CGI bots fighting actors and cgi heroes and i couldn't feel any of it it just felt like ugh, too much um this one makes that more intimate even though you think there's a lot of avengers they're actual characters fighting so um but we'll move on from that uh the other big problem and I'm, this is a, a real bummer because marvel has admitted to this problem uh james gunn the director of guardians of the galaxy admitted this problem with his own film um marvel has a villain problem and i think baron zemo who Daniel Bruhl, the German actor, plays. Uh, incredible actor. Like, his dialogue moments are awesome. But his character is, like, for me, it's forgettable. And I think the plot takes a massive dump twice. And him getting around, I don't, want, I don't want to spoil anything, and him doing what he's doing. And the explanation for why he's doing what he's doing, I actually think Baron Zemo is generic and forgettable. Uh, and that's a shame. And, of course, this film isn't primarily about that villain. But as a film I thought was going to set up another great powerful marvel comics captain america villain this movie didn't do that um he was again generic and forgettable and i was very disappointed with his you know motivations and, and how it all plays out and how his motivations are very similar to other characters motivations it's just sort of it's an overused trope that's not leading to anything special so that's kind of a shame uh and with that in mind the other kind of issue i have is that there really wasn't stakes in this film and like uh I felt like the Rousseau's and the writers promised that this film would have great stakes and change the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it does in, in the respect that it changes, the, obviously, the feelings the Avengers have with one another and what the Avengers team looks like by the end of this film. But it doesn't have the stakes like the Winter Soldier did. That crushed S.H.I.E.L.D. and changed the whole world perspective and all that stuff and released the Hydra and S.H.I.E.L.D. info, intel, all over the world, um, which is referenced in this movie a little bit, by the way. And in, actually, it's kind of a big way, but uh, this film didn't really have stakes. I felt like there weren't really consequences no matter which side of the conflict you were on. Um, and that's kind of a shame. I thought there would be a little more to that. And of course, the villain doesn't, in, to, in my opinion, doesn't do that much for the, the long-form story. Um, I didn't really feel the consequences in there. And I think there are some things that could have changed easily at the very end that would have made this a little more impactful. Um, and oh yeah, man, they got a <laughs> random side note. Captain America's shield, they gotta like Stark tech that shit. It it the, <laughs> the nonsensical like avoidance of understanding physics with how he uses his shield, that needs to change, man. Like they did a really good job, and I'm very happy Joss Whedon like added the like, magnetic thing on his on his on his gauntlet, on his bracer, so Captain America can recall his shield. But how he's throwing it and bouncing it off shit, they still haven't addressed that. And I think there's such an easy out to explain that like Tony Stark designed this so he can like bounce it using a mastery of trigonometry because Captain America's power isn't being a master of angle and physics. It's just being really strong and smart and tactical. Uh, I wish they would get past that meta joke of, of his shield bouncing off everything. Some There's a character who kind of makes fun of that in the film, but that doesn't make it okay. Like He can recall his shield, but it doesn't explain how he can bounce it and how it can just keep flying forever. And it's weird because there was the Captain America shield Easter egg in Iron Man 2 and Coulson like, picks it up. And it's like part of a shield, and you can see all this weird tech shit inside of it. I'm like, oh, maybe that is what Captain America's modern shield is. It's like this weird tech thing, so we can explain why it flies the way it does. But they just kind of, whatever. It's Captain America's shield, and Captain America's awesome, so you can throw it. But um, I really hope they do something about that. It's a weird, nerdy thing to be quirk about, but like when you're trying to ground characters, like he's the, arguably the most grounded, um, and they don't really take advantage of that. Um, on the flip side, one thing I forgot to mention up front. What on the action front, especially, what this movie does super well is give the I don't want to call them lower tier or secondary characters, but maybe they are the the lower level Avengers, like the non super powered ones. The Rousseaus give these guys a reason, a very clear reason of why they deserve to be on the Avengers roster, and specifically, I'm talking about Falcon, who like becomes a whole next level type of hero in the opening sequence with what he can do with his suit with his red wing drone and how so he's like the ultimate scout he's a flyer and they give him like awesome no spoilers combat stuff he can do in close range uh that makes him like infinitely more effective than he was in the winter soldier uh 
this movie makes it clear why Falcon, why Sam Wilson, Anthony Mackie's character, deserves to be an Avenger. And in that same respect, and, and people who've been reading me or following me on, on social media or on Screen Rant for years will call me biased for saying this, but also Hawkeye. Hawkeye returns in this film, and it makes it very clear why he's an Avenger as well. He is badass. He's incredibly tactical and smart. And his superpower for me has always been his bravery. Uh, and that really came through in Age of Ultron where he's the guy, he's the heart of the team. He's the guy who motivates Scarlet Witch to kind of become an Avenger and keeps these guys together and gives him some perspective. And he's going up against aliens and then robots and nice fighting other Avengers in this movie. And he's like, no matter what he's facing, he's always there first in line. So uh, Hawkeye's badass. His new suit is amazing. Some of the action shit he does in this film, super cool. Again, Falcon and Hawkeye, uh, just regular humans who are just super talented and brave, step it up big time in this film. That's one of the things the Rousseau's do really, really well is making their grounded characters that belong in the Captain America universe uh, make them feel awesome. Um, and on a related side note, I interviewed the Rousseau's on the Screaming Underground podcast back when Captain America The Winter Soldier was coming out on Blu-ray, and they revealed to me what Hawkeye's sequence in The Winter Soldier was originally going to be. There was a scheduling conflict and they couldn't get Jeremy Renner there, but he was going to be in like a pretty big action sequence. If you want to read that, I'll put a link to, in the description for it because it's very, very cool. And now, after seeing Hawkeye in this movie, I really freaking wish they could have fit Hawkeye in The Winter Soldier. Not that they needed to. That film already, I think, is my favorite in the universe still, even after Civil War. But anyways, that's something the Rousseau's are really, really good at, grounding their characters. So it makes me very curious how they're going to handle Avengers Infinity War when they're starting to bring in they're going to play with Thor and like Star-Lord, the Guardians of the Galaxy, and bring in Thanos. So I'm very curious how they're going to apply like their real-world grounded filmmaking with more super and cosmic stuff. That's going to be pretty interesting. But um, this has gone on way longer than I thought. I just have a lot of thoughts. But uh, some final thoughts looking forward. Um, this film gives a very good reason why, again, it's a, it's a setup film for Phase 3, but it gives you a very good reason why it's a great friggin' time for Marvel to introduce new characters, not just like in this film, like as you know, Spider-Man and Black Panther, but to give these guys new solo films so we can assemble them as new Avengers later on. And specifically, uh, you know, Spider-Man uh, is getting his own film in Homecoming next year. Black Panther is getting his own film. Captain Marvel is going to be a huge film. Um, and even Wasp, who's going to be co-headlining the Ant-Man sequel. And that's 2018 as well. So um, it gives you a very good reason why it's a great freaking time to introduce new like high-level characters so they can kind of uh, be part of like the Avengers teams in the future. Um, this film has... Uh, we already knew this going in, so it's not a spoiler. But there's no, there, there is no Nick Fury in this film. There's no Maria Hill. Uh, no S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. is... Uh, as far as the movies are concerned, still disassembled, right? Even though they're still operating on the Marvel TV front on ABC's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., no mention of them. Although the TV show, from what we're hearing, the last three or four episodes are supposed to kind of have a tie-in or be affected by the events of Captain America Civil War. So I'm hoping that there will be some connective threads, at least on the TV side. They, they did a really good job and transformed themselves after Captain America the Winter Soldier, and I really hope they do something special based on Civil War. They're promising that one of the main agents is going to die, um, I don't really care too much about that, but I'm very curious how they're going to handle um, the Sokovia Accords and like you know the Superhero Registration Act equivalent from the comics. But we'll see. We'll see if there's any actual uh, tie-ins or if any uh, the movie characters will show up in the show. I, as far as I remember, there's there has been no Maria Hill or or uh, Nick Fury appearing on the show this season, but there was in the last two seasons, so we'll just have to see. Um, and again, of course, there's no mention of the Inhumans, and of course the film was pulled off Marvel's schedule, and there are multiple reports saying it's it's dead, like Marvel is just not interested. Marvel Studios' producer and boss, Kevin Feige, just doesn't want to make it, apparently. Uh, I've written some very controversial articles about that that people are kind of unsure about, and I'll put some links down down below, uh, specifically talking about what films Marvel may replace Inhumans with and why Inhumans might actually be a dead project. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that's it. But I, I didn't really touch on spoilers. To be honest, there aren't really many spoilers. This film isn't surprising in that way. It's not meant to be like, oh, twisty twist. It's not full of twists is what I'm saying. It's like, you know, what you're seeing in the trailers is what you're going to get. And it's like, and, you know, if you're a Marvel movie fan and you want to see these characters and meet a couple of the new ones, like, obviously you have to see this. It is the summer movie event. Um, but as a standalone story, it's not a standalone story. So maybe, like, that's a growing discussion to be had. Maybe these, like, inter... Every studio is doing shared universes now. We're desperately trying to build them. And so maybe these are becoming episodes in a story or chapters in a longer book. So it's very hard to review them on their own. Uh, whereas Guardians of the Galaxy was a very standalone piece. 
I would argue Ant-Man is, is as well. This one is not. So it's hard to say, like, this is as a standalone story. This, to me, isn't as great as, uh, again, Iron Man and, and The Winter Soldier was. But uh, super cool film. So many moments. And and I will say, I don't want to make comparisons to Batman v Superman because it isn't about that. But just like Batman v Superman, there is a lot happening, a lot of different threads. I'm telling you, man, the first act, maybe in the first half of this film... It is just like introduction set piece, introduction set piece, introduction set piece with like title cards saying, we're in Nigeria, we're in like New York, we're in Washington, whatever. And it's like there's so many of those. We're in Siberia. That's very difficult to keep track of everything. And there's – not that it's a complicated film, but there's so many details that you miss because there's just – it's so packed full of content that – uh, obviously I'm going to see it again, but I think you need to see it twice to kind of appreciate all the little details, uh, the character moments, the dialogue bits, because there's a lot of hidden explanation and exposition in those dialogue bits that I think you need to really m appreciate the plot the Russo's are trying to do, uh, even though I do believe there are some massive plot holes with uh, the main story, like behind the scenes and the Zemo stuff. But again, no more spoilers. That's enough for me. I'll stop. We're like past 20 minutes now. Um, this movie's already out in Europe and a couple of other international overseas locations. If you've seen it, uh, let me know your thoughts. But please, no spoilers. Give it a week, at least, by the time I publish this video because um, it hasn't hit North America yet and, and it will in like a week. So we can kind of get into spoilers then. If you really want me to, I'll leave, like I can do a spoilers video. Um, or if you have questions you want me to answer or like things we can – or just topics you want me to discuss in future spoiler-friendly videos, uh, let me know in the comments and I can do that. If there's, if there's interest in it, I'll do it because I love talking about these films and like I pretty much write about this every friggin' day. There's so much stuff to write about. Uh, but until next time, like and subscribe. Just quickly share, share your thoughts if you have seen it uh, and, and uh, what you want to see going forward in, in Phase 3. There's eight more movies with release dates coming out in the next three – four years uh so a lot to look forward to and of course a lot of stuff on the tv front as well uh so thanks for watching guys and sticking with me if you did that's 21 minutes geez uh <laughs> and until next time uh, like and subscribe for more cheers